everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan and today we're going to be showing you how to drop in a distributor in our Chevrolet Big Block. This is how to build a Chevrolet Big Block part 12 on our big playlist here on YouTube. I have left the link down below in the description for you to that big playlist here on YouTube. Um, and today's a really exciting one. We're starting the ignition system and kind of getting the engine prepped to go in. We're also gonna put the motor mounts on a little bit later as well. Um, and this video, I wanted to go very slow and show you exactly how to drop a distributor in. That way you get it right, uh, hopefully on the first time, but if not, that's understandable as well. And the key there is to just not get frustrated and keep trying it the way uh, I'm going to show in a little bit. And once you've mastered this technique of installing your distributor, uh, you're going to be the go-to guy for that, and that is an awesome feeling, trust me. So sit back and relax, and let's get to it. All right, so we got our distributor here. Uh, this is a stock replacement for our Chevrolet Big Block. Now, uh, this has a points and condenser, and actually uses weights uh, to advance the ignition timing. So this is what you would refer to as old school. And since I want to keep my car in the vein of old school, I kind of want to experience that for myself, what you would do in the 60s and 70s, I'm going to rock the old school. If you want to do a fancy pants, uh, MSD ignition set with a cool box, and you can play around with settings of the laptop, those are all awesome. They're super, super cool. You can get a lot of power, a lot of uh, miles per gallon, play around with a lot of stuff with that, especially if you have fuel injection uh, with it. But uh, we're going old school today, but the process of installing the distributor is exactly the same. The mechanical interface between the distributor and uh, the camshaft is identical no matter what distributor you get, so it also applies to you. So this is a WPS DST 1835, uh, absolute shameless Chinese knockoff of the older stuff, but it should do fine for what we want to do with it. I did want to also mention that this comes with a vacuum advance, but we're not going to be using that. We're going to be relying on the weights. There we go. This looks pretty good. I also wanted to mention, uh, some people like to obsess over your uh, distributor drive gear. That's the actual part that interfaces with your camshaft. Um, but for a street build like this, just a regular cast iron one is perfectly good. All right, I have this awesome printout here, not only showing our firing order, but also where our uh, distributor firing order is going to be, and they're a little bit uh, different. So what we're going to do next is we're going to make it crystal clear where number one on our points distributor is. Um, that way we always know where it is. We can always, you know, basically call that back to home. And if you have a point system like we do, it's going to look like this. And if you have HEI, it's going to look like this. It's the exact same order. It's just they're spaced out a little bit differently. Look a little different, but it's exactly the same, I promise. So you can even see on this printout, they labeled the ones with a nice red. So we're going to follow kind of in that same vein here. And we can see that this arrow points to access door. That's what this thing is here. And so the one just above it is eight, and then the one next door to it is one. So I'm gonna go ahead and for you guys, I'm just gonna point a nice gold one on that little black piece there. So we just always know where number one is at a quick glance while we are wiring. And then on the distributor body right below number one, we're just gonna put a nice little black one right there. That way we always know where number one is. All right, so the next thing we can do is take off this plastic covering here, revealing our drive gear and little tang in there. And now that goes into our oil pump drive shaft. So that's really important. That's gonna line up. We're gonna show you that in just a little bit. And this is what actually interfaces with your camshaft. That's very important to get right as well. And then we can go ahead and remove our distributor cap, which is uh, spring loaded, the standard screwdriver, push down, half turn on one side half turn on the other, and then it comes apart just like that. And the idea is that you want the rotor here to be pointing at uh, number one. So we'll have this black line uh, lined up from here to black line pointing at number one. We'll go over that later as well. All right, so there are uh, two ways that you can determine whether you're on top dead center on number one ready to fire. We're gonna show the easier way first because we're in a garage situation where the engine's on a stand, but we're also gonna show the other way as well. Now, what we're gonna do because it's a little confusing, there's two times that the uh, timing mark comes around. Uh, one on the stroke we actually want, the uh, combustion stroke, because that's the one it needs to be set up on, and then on the other one, which is wrong, it's called 180-ing. We're gonna be turning the engine over to set up the distributor to be installed, and we're gonna be looking for that white timing mark. We're gonna be looking for the timing mark, and they're not always white, I painted mine white uh, for convenience. Uh, sometimes they're just a groove. Turn that around and see it's coming up there. And uh, what we can do is look at our valve train. So we're gonna turn our engine over until we see our exhaust valve open 
and then begin to close while our intake valve, see our exhaust valve's closing, or opening, excuse me. Now it's closing, now our intake will start to actuate. Intake's opening, intake beginning to close. Now this is the important part, the intake is beginning to close. Now we're gonna look at the harmonic balancer. So now we know that it is on the combustion stroke, so we can continue rotating our engine and watch for our timing mark. Well, I start to see it. Here it comes. Now, where we're gonna leave it is on this nice zero emboss. See where it says zero? That is zero before top dead to center. So we know we're absolutely perfect. Oh, that's a little too far. Let's do hair back. There we go. Now we're absolutely perfect. So now we're gonna talk about the other way to do this if you didn't wanna take your valve covers off. This is the spark plug hole for cylinder number one. And what you can do is either stick your finger in there creating a nice seal while you turn the engine or you can use a compression gauge. Uh, the finger's a lot easier though because you'll feel the blast of air on your finger. There you go. And then we can again look at our uh, timing mark on our harmonic balancer and you know you're on top dead center. So let's go ahead and go inside of our distributor well here and you can see down there on the bottom left of your screen, you can kind of see the uh, distributor gear. It's a little blurry, but you can see it down in there. And then you can see the tang for the oil pump drive shaft is pointing uh, up and to the right. So that is what a lot of people struggle with when trying to drop in a distributor because it can be in the right position and everything's right except for that tang and it won't drop in all the way and you won't have oil, uh, oil drive won't be engaged. It's really important that we rotate and align that uh, tang to interface with our distributor uh, drive tang for the uh, oil assembly. And this can take a couple times. It's a little bit of trial and error, so don't get frustrated if you don't get it on the first go. Okay, so we have our distributor here and we can see that this tang here is pointed not exactly at that black mark. It's actually back one lobe on the reluctor gear here. Um, that way when you drop it in, it will uh, walk itself to the correct position. So we want it just a little bit back and uh, obviously it'll be a lot off if it's off, so uh, make sure you double check that. Because there's a helix gear, it'll uh, twist on you. So you wanna make sure that uh, you account for that. And before we install, we wanna make sure that we have our gasket installed here. Uh, we have this nice Felpro one out of our kit, so you wanna make sure that's gonna sit in its home right up here. That way you don't get any leakage. And then we're gonna take some of our uh, Permatex Ultra Slick, link down below in the description, and we're gonna cover this gear here and right in here as well. And this is pretty snotty stuff. So uh, be careful not to get it anywhere you don't want it. It's pretty lubed up there. Now we can do our first attempt at dropping on our distributor here with the black mark pointed at cylinder number one over there. So then we can go ahead and just push that down. Now I got really lucky right there because the, uh, this tang and our black mark all line up and look at cylinder number one. So that was actually pretty lucky. Now, if you're not as lucky as me, you're gonna go ahead and grab a long standard screwdriver and just put it down in there and turn that drive that I showed earlier. And then you wanna make sure that your uh, vacuum plenum here is also pointed kind of off to the right of me, uh, off to the left of you guys. That way it's not pointed like directly at the top of the intake manifold or something. And then uh, what we want to do is set it up to run, right? I mean, that's what you want to do, uh, especially for your first initial startup. Uh, we want to go ahead and advance the distributor. The distributor is going to rotate this way here. So in order to counteract that, we're going to move the distributor body to the left just a little bit like that. And that's uh, right around 10 degrees or so. And then we can uh, lock down our distributor and we're at a uh, 10 degree advance. All right, now we can put on our distributor hold down plate here. I got this one off Amazon. It's a billet aluminum. It doesn't have to be that fancy. It's just a piece of metal and a bolt. Now, if you're having trouble uh, putting on your distributor hold down plate, you can go ahead and move the distributor body back like this for a light install. But when you're bolting it, you know, tightening it down, you want to put it back to where it was. And you just want to make sure that your hold down is all the way against the distributor like this one is. And then we can go ahead and rotate to where this was again. So then we can move it back to our top dead center and then we're just gonna go 10 degrees advanced. 
Uh, they do make a special uh, distributor wrench for this. It's a 916, but since it's out of the car and we have access to the back here, we can go ahead and snug that down with just a plain Jane wrench, just making sure that the hold down is completely concentric on the distributor body. And there we go. And when you're tightening it, just make sure that it is nice and snug and that the distributor doesn't move, you know, with reasonable pressure. Um, use your best judgment and uh, just snug is good. So now what I'm going to do is turn the front of the engine. This isn't a necessary step. It's just one I thought would be kind of fun is if I turn the crank, you could see it rotate uh, the way it needs to rotate. And which is also hooked up to our oil pump, which is cool. And it's just kind of neat to see it turning around after all that work. And uh, why not see it rotate and make sure that it's actually working, right? Yeah, that's perfect. So now the distributor is timed to the engine. You can turn the crank all you want. It doesn't matter. There's no way for it to become out of sync. All right, now we can replace our cap. But before we do, I want to go over what this wire is. This is for the trigger side of the coil. We're going to go over this later when we do the entire ignition system once it's inside of the car. But for now, we can put the cap on. Now, a lot of people like to wait until the engine is in the car to put the cap on. We're going to put it on to keep dust and other crud out. Um, but we're probably going to remove it when we drop it in to the vehicle. And it only goes on one way. There's, a, There's little a little tang just right here, and that interfaces with a little uh, groove on the distributor body. Now we can grab our standard screwdriver and give that another turn. Make sure those are nice and held down and in place and our distributor is installed. The next thing I want to go over is engine mounts. Now, colloquially, they're called motor mounts. I might refer to them as a motor mount. I know it's not going on a motor. I got it. But we do call them motor mounts, and I'm going to call them motor mounts from here on out. Technically, they're engine isolators. I know. So these are from CPP. They are a CP1114G. These were a pain in the neck to find, I have to admit, because they are a two and one half inch opening here on this gap. Now on my GMF body, it's a two and a half inch, but for almost everything else, it's two and three eighths. So you gotta measure uh, the mounts that are on your car. But for us today, we're using these bad boys. They look uh, absolutely amazing. I'm very satisfied with those. Now for mounting hardware, we have some bolts from Summit Racing. They are part number 910240, link down below in the description. These should work great and they match. How great's that? So let's go ahead and install it. All right, so we got our motor mount here with our backing plate installed. Looks pretty good. We're just gonna go ahead and install that at finger tight for now. We'll come back with a torque spec later. So now we're gonna move on to using our torque spec and we're gonna do the 25 foot pounds. Uh, that's, I couldn't really find a torque spec for these bad boys, but we're just gonna go with what the bell housing bolts are. Seems fairly reasonable. And if you don't have a torque wrench, totally understandable. Uh, snug and tight is what you're looking for. Forearm tight is what I would call it. There we go, do the same thing for the other side and butter mounts are on. So that's how to drop in your distributor for a big luck Chevy Gen 4. Uh, it's really easy and straightforward. That also applies to a bunch of different engines, small blocks, big blocks of varying uh, gens and such if uh, your number one cylinder is located in that spot. Most of the Chevys are that way, so now you know how to put a distributor in a Chevy that uses that type of ignition system. If you like me, you like what I do on this channel, and you want to support me, feel free to click that join button down below. Otherwise, please subscribe, and I'll see you next time.